Belief and faith are not the same thing. When we believe something, we can, uh, you know, can believe in many things, not necessarily in God. But faith is actually trust in God. And the faith that I want to talk about tonight is a special gift from God. Now, you've heard a lot of this already, if you, but I think it's very important to repeat it. And I will begin um, with a story that you also know, I should think, uh, about um, St. Paisius on the Holy Mountain, who was talking with a, a group of monks at Stavronikita Monastery, probably in, in the courtyard, and when they're sitting there, this uh, young academic monk was actually explaining how St. Isaac of Nineveh, although he's recognised by the Orthodox Church, in, in fact was an historian bishop. Now, the f facts that I found is that um, St. Isaac lived in Nineveh, surrounded by an historians, and he, he only served as a bishop for five years before he decided not to get involved with politics and he went and lived in a cave. He had been a solitary before he was chosen to be bishop. Anyway, that's not important. What's important is St. Um, Paisius, Elder Paisius, uh, was very disturbed by this conversation, whereas this... Uh, educated monk was saying, well, we know now that, you know, St. Isaac really is, was not orthodox, but we do accept his writings. In fact, he's, you know, they're in the Philokalia, and we all know about him. And St. Pius was very upset by this, to the degree that he got up and left. And he went back up the hill to his uh, kelly on his little cell, and uh, on the way he saw a procession of uh, monks coming down, quite a large group, and so he stopped stood to one side to let them go past, and as they did went past, they, they stopped. And one of them came out of the group and came, went up to him and said, I am orthodox. And then the whole group disappeared. So let's start on that premise, all right, faith. Saint Paisius is an example of Saint Isaac's faith, what he understands by faith, the mystical teachings and so now let's start with St. Isaac and then we'll give examples from the life of St. Paisius which demonstrates to us, especially as we need convincing, and we're not very, uh, you know, uh, au fait with uh, miracles, I know we believe it, but, uh, and well, we have, some of us had, had, have had experience, of course. Um, but St. Isaac starts by saying, a man of faith is above nature. His life is beyond the laws of nature. That means that he doesn't necessarily, or she, doesn't matter who, whichever saint it is, um, has to be, uh, obey Newtonian physics, the laws of Newtonian, Newtonian physics, because they have faith, which is a gift from God. Now, St. Isaac is talking about faith as a very powerful, powerful noetic force. He talks the same about humility. Remember the talk before, a few weeks ago? Humility is also very powerful. It isn't just something, I believe something, or I'm going to be humble. It actually has a power with us ascribed to it. Uh, the power of faith is actually remarkable. According to uh, St. Isaac, that when a person has faith that God gives them, then they can transcend the rules of the normal world around them. And I'm thinking of, um, well, let's take so Mary of Egypt is a good example. I know, I know she's in history for us, although, of course, she's real, she's here. But in, in the story of St. Um, Mary of Egypt, was that um, Zosimus saw her walking across the Jordan, walking on the water. The holy prophet Isaiah says that if you have humility and faith, then you can walk through fire and not be burnt. You can walk on water as though you're walking on land. That's in the book of Isaiah. Saint um, Paisis is, is a contemporary example of that phenomenon. Um, the uh, commentary on, on this by, um, I don't know who, the, I can't remember who wrote his um, biography, but, but he says that, um, St. Paisius was waterproof. He didn't get wet when he didn't need to. And, and there's examples that he used to travel to various monasteries to visit, and he would take an umbrella with him. 
because there's a lot of heavy rain, um, and I don't know what time of year, maybe spring when it's, it's very wet. Um, but when he turned up at the monastery or wherever he visited somebody, he was always dry. Not even shoes were wet, there's no sign of rain. Um, um, another time, um, he was actually in a car traveling to Thessalonica from the Holy Mountain, and there was a storm, a really heavy downpour. Uh, the driver was actually a policeman from the Holy Mountain, one of the, one of the police that looked, um, police the Holy Mountain, and he was driving, and he said, this is terrible. Anyway, they, they arrived at the, the convent, um, Suroti, which is the one that St. Pius was founded, and the nuns saw, saw the car, and so they came out with umbrellas and held them up, and St. Pius just got out the car, and there was no rain where he was in his vicinity, including the car, it was bone dry and still raining. Then after he went into the monastery, they got into the car and then the car was hit by a deluge of rain, heavy rain. So he was waterproof. Another example, and this reminds me of St. Mary of Egypt, is that he wanted to visit uh, another cell with some people in it, monks, and uh, there was heavy rain. In fact, there were torrents, and the bridge from his cell to this cell that he wanted to visit had, had been washed away because of raging um, water, flooding. And um, anyway, he turned up at the cell, and they noticed that he was dry. And so when, when after he, you know, they talked and whatever they were doing, after like, he's going home, he said, well, I have to go home now. And they said, well, we'll accompany you to the river. And he said, no, you won't. He wouldn't let them. So they never saw what happened. Beyond the laws of nature, this is in the 80s or 90s, all right? It's quite right recent, well, it, is, it depends on your age. It's recent. And another example was um, not on the Holy Mountain. This is actually a few years before he settled on the Holy Mountain. He was in a, another monastery. Um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name now. Um, and he was going to up to the monastery, and he had a little boy with him, a seven-year-old, six or seven-year-old boy with him, and uh, he was obviously carrying somebody because the, the elder said to him, "Look, if you get tired, because it's all uphill, and you know the, the, the road, the, it's not proper roads, it's tracks, goat tracks." He said, "If you get tired, he said, cross yourself, and give me the wood to carry." So it must have been firewood, I suppose. Anyway, and they're going up up the path, and eventually they come around a bend of the path, and there's a huge boulder a giant boulder on the path, and the little boy says, well, we're going to need an excavator to move that. I mean, what were we going to do? I mean, they couldn't climb over the top, it was too high. So you, know, you can imagine that it's just a big obstacle. And the elder said to him, oh, no, don't worry about it. You, you, you can move it, you do it. And he said, well, I can't, I'm too small. You know, I'm seven, I can't do that. He says, you can. He says, put your hand on it, right? Push. And, and the elder pushed on the other side, and the rock, rock moved across to the side. The power of faith. Impossible by ordinary standards, but with the power of faith, yes, you can move mountains. So when we read that in the Gospel, that if you have faith, you can move mountains, yes, you can. That's not belief. It's faith, which is, which is a much stronger and, and deeper and a gift from God, a divine gift. St. Uh, Isaac says... A man of faith lives constantly in the presence of God. He has an encounter with God. It is an exper experiential encounter with the divine. So he's always in touch with God, all, all the time. There's a, 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 which I thought was a legend actually, it's written in one of the books on, on the Holy Mountain, that there are invisible ascetics. These are ascetics that nobody can see, so um, how do we know they exist? Well, sometimes they appear, but we don't know where they live or where they go. They're not visible. And so you think, well, it's interesting. I want to believe that, but, you know, it's a little bit difficult to accept until I discovered that St. Paisius was, had that gift. He was sitting, he had a visitor, and they were outside, outside his cell. His cell is surrounded by a fence, and they have a little bell, and you ring the bell, and he sends a key down a wire to let you in. Otherwise, it's locked. Anyway, he was outside in the woods walking, and uh, there's a young man who had a lot of problems, and he basically a confession. 
and they sat talking, and while they were talking, they heard the noise of other people coming up the path, obviously going to go and see the elder. And uh, the, the man lowered his voice, the young man, and he said, why are you lowering your voice? Carry on, normally. He said, yes, but there's some people coming, you know, they're going to hear. He said, don't take your notice, that's okay. And uh, anyway, he, they, as they got closer, he, he stopped talking. He said, why are you stopped talking? Well, people are coming. He said, just carry on. So he carried on his confession, and these, this group of people came along, walked right past them, went up to the gate of, of the cell and, and rang the bell for, for the elder. They didn't see, not only did they not see St. Paisius, it was right on the side of the path, they didn't see the, the pilgrim. He was covered by it because it can be shared. So you encounter somebody like St. Paisius, and they become invisible, you do as well. So if God grants it, obviously, this is not magic, you can't just you know, say, I'm now going to be invisible. No, this is to do with God's providence, and we, we don't understand it, and we should, certainly should not examine it. We should have faith, or le at least have belief, that this is a miracle, and we don't need to be keep, you know, keep our nose out of it, not to be curious. And another example was, was some man went to visit him and he was in despair because he really had problems and he rang the bell and there's no answer. And he said, oh, Elder's not here. Elder Paisius, I need you. I need to talk to you. Where are you? And he, he called out and he went into the woods and, and he walked about and he was getting really upset. And suddenly the elder appeared. And he was shocked by this. He almost jumped out of his skin. He said, oh, well, you know, where were you? He said, no, I was here all the time. But you didn't see me. Now, if anybody in normal life said you didn't see me, you would think that they were you were behind a tree or something, or you you know you weren't looking in the right direction. No, he was invisible. You are invisible. You couldn't see him. And there was a little bit of humour with it as well, because he would sometimes appear when people weren't expecting it and smile, and you know then return return you know, return to what we call normal. This is the power of faith, the power of the, that um, is a gift from God and which we can all have. Another example was a, a man of faith is God-like. If, if you have faith, you're God-like and you have authority to create. To me, this is an amazing thing when I, when I came across this in, in the write, writing of St. Isaac. He says, as a man of faith, has the authority to create create things out of nothing, which is what God does, from, from non-being into being. An example of it is a very nice uh, example, um, a homely example, I think, is that he had a visitor and it was in winter and there was a lot of snow outside and he wanted to give the visitor um, some Turkish delight, lokum. Um, but he couldn't because the, the group before was a large group that eaten it all. So it wasn't it. He thought, oh, I'd like to give you some. He said, he says, just a minute. And he goes out, uh, out of the cell. The elder leaves the cell and, it, and, and takes up scoop, a, a handful of snow and starts doing something with it. They, 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 they can't see exactly. He's like, like modeling. And then he puts it on a, gets a tray and puts it on a tray and he brings it into the cell and he says, have some. And, well, this is snow. He said, don't have some. So he, Picked it, he could pick it up. It was solid. It wasn't snow anymore in that sense. And he ate it and it was local. Delicious. He said, well, I'm, I'm going to give you the rest of it so you can take it with you to give to your friends back at the monastery. So this is an ordinary snow that melts. This is creation. From nothing. Well, there was a substance, yeah. There was snow. Oh, so you make little, yes. That is another world. And is that a world only um, for saints? Well, I wouldn't say yes, I would because um, they are saints anyway. But it is for all of us to strive towards. When we have faith, we trust God in everything. As I said to you before, when, when we trust God and everything goes well in our lives, we are very happy. Yeah, we have strong faith. And then, but when everything goes wrong then our faith, our belief, our faith becomes very weak. And we've got to learn to live by faith only. And when we have faith, you see the problem is that when, when you have faith, when you try to have faith, 
knowledge is it gets in the way. When I say knowledge, I mean it's philosophy, science. I'm not talking about everyday work because you have to be practical. You can't live. You can't live without that. But knowledge as a pursuit, inquiry. It seems terrible to say that. I mean, uh, you know, if you think of, of music and, and the knowledge that's a, a, you know attached to that, um, but that knowledge is a mask for faith. You cannot have proper faith if you if you depend on knowledge. Now, it doesn't mean that knowledge and faith are necessarily opposite. They can work together. And an example I give you, or I gave before, was um, I make the bread for the altar, the prosperer. Okay, I'm going to make some on Friday for the weekend and for the following weeks. And that's bread, you know, flour, water, and yeast, and all the things, and I follow a recipe. That's knowledge. I'm following a recipe. I'm doing an order of things. I, pray, I make it, I bake it. I bring it to church, but the moment in the liturgy, that bread becomes the body of Christ. That is faith. When you see it in the chalice, if you see it when I when I commune you, it's bread. And why? But it isn't. It's both. It's faith, which is mystical, and it's knowledge, which is practical. You have to know how to bake cross, otherwise you can't make it. You have to have that knowledge. Now that's a very simple, simple example, but we need to apply that to life, to our work, to our relationships with people, because that's very important. In our relationships, yes, we have knowledge, but we also have to have faith, and we have to believe that if we pray for somebody, that is far better than giving them, um, you know, some advice. And sometimes you can't, because people are objectionable, <laughs> they won't listen to you, but you can pray for them. And prayer is far more powerful than knowledge. And uh, take for example, um, a mother praying for her children has, is very powerful, extremely powerful. It's much better than telling your kids what to do. I'm not saying that you should be without discipline, but... but Sometimes you, you know that, that sometimes you just can't get through and the answer is to pray because that is far more powerful than um, having a discussion about things or trying to correct somebody. A priest went to visit uh, Elder Paisius and um, he walked, um, well, it must be nearly 12 hours, Wherever he went, he missed the meals at the monasteries. Uh, I know this from, from personal experience, that if you don't get there at the right time, you, you don't get anything. And um, it took me a little while to realise that the time is Byzantine time, it's not the same as we have. Anyway, that's, that's the background of it. And the priest came and he was starving. And he said, Elder, I'm so hungry, can you feed me? He said, yes, of course I can. He said, let me see what I've got. And he opened a little bag and in it there were two tomatoes and three pieces of rusk. Sukhari. Sukhari. Yeah, what is Sukhari. Yes, yeah, Sukhari. Sukhari. Dry bread. Three pieces and two tomatoes. And the priest looked at it. He said, well, I can eat 20 of those. He said, well, no, bless the food. You're a priest. I, he read a prayer and then he asked the priest to bless it. You bless the food. So he blessed it. Um, he ate one tomato. He couldn't take, eat the second one. It was too full. And the bread, he ate half a rusk. He was, so, he was full up. He said, I can't eat anymore. And what's interesting is that when he left the elder, oh, yeah, before he left the elder, he said, would you give me a blessing? He said, well, I can't bless you. You're a priest. I'm not a priest. He said, well, you, know, you can do so. He said, all right, he said. And he laid his hands on his head, and he felt the power of faith going through his body. Grace, blagadat, felt it physically and then he left he said for the rest of the day uh, he, this is in the story that he's telling the story he said i couldn't eat i went to a monastery and having a meal i couldn't eat i could drink i had to drink a lot i was thirsty all the time but i could not eat i was so full up in fact i was bloated and he said find the feeding of the five thousand we can't believe that five thousand two how many two Five loaves and two fishes. 
and then the other one, the feeding the 4,000 is different. We can't believe that. Try it, it doesn't work, does it? How can it? And, and how can they collect baskets of fragments that were left behind, the crumbs? Twelve baskets. It's too mind-blowing. But then when you begin to understand how St. Paisius lived and what he could do through the power of faith, then it's true. And so this priest was experiencing the feeding of the 5,000. What a wonderful thing to be able to bless the food and then it, it, it's multiplied. I mean, there weren't any more tomatoes, by the way, but you couldn't eat. You, you had your full, a fill, sorry, had your fill. Um, this is another example of the power of faith. Excuse me, I'm just... I think it's wonderful in, in our time to have um, St. Paisius to be a living example. And I think it's wonderful, the living example of what St. Isaac wrote. Here's the faith. This is what a man of faith is. And here's St. Paisius doing it. And, no, and they were close. And I think it's wonderful that he appeared to St. Paisius. And you know, of course, uh, these other things of St. Paisius is being in two places at once. Again, we cannot understand that. St. John of Cronus is the same, by the way. Serving the liturgy in, in St. Petersburg and in Kronstadt, and at the same time appearing at the bedside of somebody in the Far East and saying, you'll be all right, don't fret. I'm going to have to go. I mean, we don't know the wording exactly, but I make that up. He says, you know, you know could, I can't stay. I'm, I'm in the liturgy. You know, he's got to do something. So he, you know, he transports back. You see all these uh, Star Trek and things about transfer, you know, beam me up, Scotty. Well, it's real. <laughs> Not in that sense, but in, in the spiritual sense. And St. Pius is being in two places at once, entertaining pilgrims at his cell and talking to them. And then, uh, but at the same time, actually, he was in Egypt. That's what his, um, his cell servant said. He said, well, he's not here, he's in Egypt. Well, we've just been talking to him. And he gave us refreshments. Trilingual, you know, what do you say, multilingual. He could understand other languages. I, I Well, you know, I'll stop there, actually. So th this is a wonderful experience. This is not magic. This is the miracle of God. And it is faith to which we can aspire. Maybe we're still on the level of belief, but we start, we start in a small way, tr trusting God's providence. Everything that happened to us is given by God and it can be proven. 